Warlocks, you had five exotic robes get adjustments for Season 21. Vesper of Radius, Chromatic Fire, Sanguine Alchemy, Mantle of Battle Harmony, and Starfire Protocol. Today, I just want to do a little check-in on these robes, see what's going on with them now. Vesper of Radius is first on my list. Every five seconds, your Rift is going to pulse with damage, AoEing anything near it, with kills resulting in an explosion. If you're using an Arc subclass, these explosions add blinding to its effects, and you also regenerate Rift energy faster when surrounded, which has always been a thing with these robes. So it is essentially a more souped-up version of its previous form. I've tried this in both normal level content and GM level content being on an ARC subclass. This is an exotic that I think needs a pretty specific location to be successful in, but within those locations, it can be really good. Salvage, for example, not a good location. There's not enough enemies, they're too spread out, there's too much firepower in the group. I don't really feel like you're going to see much value here or very, very limited value. Deep dive, especially for those tier seven runs, this is where you're getting a bit more value. Enemies are in higher supply. There are usually areas to control, good areas to drop a rift and really dominate a section of the map. Defiant Battlegrounds, if we go back to season 20, are hit or miss literally within the battleground itself. Some areas are amazing for these robes and others are really not. I ran Fallen Saber on Grandmaster with this on, and I think it actually performed very well to the point where if I saw someone running it in this strike, I would just say, okay, cool. It is successful because the strike is designed in a way that you will maintain close proximity with enemies a very large portion of the time. There are lots of tight corridors, lots of swarming enemies, and you're going to have a lot of opportunities to use your Rift and use it often because you're going to be surrounded by enemies very often. You can also use this defensively in case you get rushed, but using the exotic in a more proactive sense is going to give you much more value, and there are better choices to make if you want a more defensive or reaction-focused exotic or even build altogether. But if you plan on using this in a proactive manner, then having high game knowledge is not a requirement, but is strongly encouraged. Knowing spawns, their locations, their timings are really going to help you maximize the value of this exotic in the situations where it can be good. Not every strike is going to be great for Vesper, though. If we look at the Season 21 offerings for Grandmaster Strikes, we have Devil's Lair, Corrupted, Disgraced, Lightblade Saber, and Psyops Battleground Moon. Devil's Lair is a pretty good one. Corrupted is, I would say, not. Uh, maybe outside of the elevator section, it's not. Disgraced is a little bit risky. I'd want some practice runs, and even then, I'm a little iffy on it. Lightblade is probably a no for me. Saber is fantastic, and Psyops Moon has a chance. So you can have some good success with this exotic in the high end, but you need to be selective. It's not something I would wear for everything. I'm also not super interested in them for law sector purposes, as the main combatants I worry about are champions, and I don't want to be rifting next to a champion, although this technically can stun unstoppable champions because of the blind. I think these robes would feel a little bit better to me if they did the same amount of damage total, but changed how often the rift pulsed. Every three seconds instead of every five seconds, less damage per pulse, just to kind of keep up the intensity of the arc experience. I guess this would have blinding implications too. It'd be easier to blind things. I don't know how much Bungie would really want people to have nearly perma blinding on something like this kind of effect. It could even be a PvP reason too. I'm not sure. Next up, we have Chromatic Fire. This didn't really get changed so much as it got buffed. Larger explosions and the explosion adds some kind of subclass effect. Blind for Arc, Scorch for Solar, Weaken for Void, Slow for Stasis, and Sever for Strand. So in an attempt to really maximize my headshot kill potential, I actually busted out Forerunner since your crit damage is really high and can one-shot a good amount of targets. Although if you cannot one-shot the target, you are going to be burning through ammo really quickly. Other weapons I would consider are things like Hawkmoon, maybe Huckleberry, still a very beastly gun, Ace of Spades, Wish Ender does nicely, it's just slow. Of course, Outbreak Perfected, still not too bad either. 
Ultimately though, this exotic's performance still relies on having enemies being clustered up in a ball often enough to be able to tag things with an explosion. And as a result, I feel like this is more gimmicky and just more a for fun option than anything I really plan on taking seriously. Much like Vesper, this is an exotic you wear when you know you're going to be able to get lots of explosion AoE effects onto these other enemies. Maybe Deep Dive, Avalon, Exotic Mission, stuff like that. But in running some just generic content, things don't stack up as much as you might think. And therefore, you're not really gaining the benefits of the explosion as often as you want. In terms of how I would rank the effects, I think Sever is probably the weakest effect out of all of them. Things dealing less damage to you can be very hard to feel in the moment. Slow is after that, mainly because you only apply 30 slow, so it takes a lot to freeze something. Scorch, probably next after that, as you can get a really similar effect from just using a weapon with Incandescent. Weaken is pretty much always a nice benefit, but the crown to me goes to Arc Blinding because it's a near infinite chain of crowd control if you can get it rolling and blinding a target is a very, very strong effect. Why would I try to sever something and have it deal less damage to me when I can blind it and it will deal no damage to me? At the same time, Arc Warlocks can just build for that effect anyway. I have a build that already does this and it lets me do something completely different with my exotic entirely. Next up, we have Sanguine Alchemy, where your rifts now give the equivalent of two Surge mods as long as the weapon you're using matches your subclass, in addition to the effect that I gave previously, kills extending the duration of your rift while you're in a rift. People have been getting pretty hyped for these robes because it now means you can double up on Surge mods. Sanguine gives you two Surge mods worth of bonus damage, which is 17% in PvE, assuming you meet the requirements. Which means you can then also do another two or three Surge mods for a different element or for your kinetic weapon, essentially giving you near permanent uptime on weapon damage boosts for your entire kit. This has a lot of implications for endgame content, as it allows you to boost not only your main damage dealer, like a rocket or something, but also a weapon like Izanagi's Burden, it gaining the effects of kinetic surge mods. If you plan on using these robes purely just for the fact that you don't need to use surge mods in your boots and you want to use other mods like scav or holster mods or whatever, then... I think you're just kind of wasting your time here. If you're going to use Sanguine, then I think it should be because you want to double up for some sort of boss damage play. This is probably not something I'd really bother with for non-boss focused things though. Like I personally wouldn't bother with this in Deep Dive or Seasonal Content or any sort of low or mid tier thing. That's not because it's bad, but rather just because it's not very exciting to me and I'd much rather run with a more fun build than run with Sanguine and get a kinetic weapon boost. You know what I mean? Mantle of Battle Harmony has always been kind of good. This mainly got more of an adjustment versus a big shift in how it works. Still works pretty much the same way. It's just that the damage buff you get is now 25% when you have your super, but it does not stack with Surge Mods. So it's another exotic designed to get you off of Surge Mods or onto some sort of double Surge action like Sanguine does. The problem here is that this doesn't work the exact same as Sanguine because you need kills to refresh your mantle buff, but the buff only lasts for 11 seconds, whereas Sanguine can make it last really, really long. It's not designed for your average boss damage strategy. It's kind of designed for slaying out. You can get a ton of super energy with this thing, and you can get it really quickly too, especially if you're cranking out orbs of power. But I find these robes to be at odds with itself. If you don't have your super, then you're not getting the damage bonus. And if you have the damage bonus, you need to hang on to your super. You're not really getting the best of both worlds unless you utilize something like Agger's Scepter, where you can use your super energy on and off to activate the mega beam that Agger's Scepter has and then quickly get back to max super energy. In that specific case, yeah, it's fantastic. In most other cases, I can understand why people haven't 
utilized this that much in PvE. It's really easy to get super energy anyway, and people don't really mind using Surge mods. But, again, don't sleep on the super energy gains, because they're big. Finally, Starfire Protocol's nerf. The era of just spamming an SMG and doing a billion extra damage, that's over. That is the main thing that they wanted to kill with these robes, and they definitely did that. Are they still usable without that effect? Yes, they are. But you need to actively be killing things to really gain the benefit now instead of just spraying a little bit of damage here and there. There's a good reason that a lot of Solar Warlocks are rotating over to a Sunbracers focused build now, and that's partly because of the uptime that that build can sustain. Part of the appeal of Starfire was, yes, the damage, but the uptime also felt very rewarding. Sunbracers can have incredibly high uptime as well, but it's the fact that you can chain it forever if you're smart about it, although given the range of snap melee, that's a bit more of a difficult task in GMs. I also ran with this build multiple times in Grandmaster Nightfalls with both rocket and machine gun equipped. And if you plan on using this in a GM experience, I'm definitely gonna recommend a machine gun if you actually want to use the exotic effect on a regular basis. Trying to yoink kills with a primary was pretty much up to the damage gods in terms of who got the kill, but with the machine gun, it was much easier to mow things down and to get more grenades thrown. You can plan your rifts and grenades very easily when you know you're gonna be getting some consistent kills. The same goes for lower end content as well, but it's just easier to get kills in lower end content. This is also not something I'm imagining a lot of people are gonna bother with in lower end content though, since Sunbracers allow for much greater freedom of movement and have just as much, if not more firepower available. And that's it. That's how I'm feeling about these robes. All in all, some pretty good changes and buffs for the bulk of them. Starfire, you know, <laughs> really got brought in line. Let me know how you're feeling about these robes. If you're, you know, coming up with any sort of unique builds or anything like that, you want to share with the crowd, feel free. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.